So any children who would like a better view to, uh, to read along with me the book that I'm going to read, I invite you to come forward and take a seat. But do remember where you're seated. Uh, there are a lot of big people here today, so make sure you know where your big people are. All right, please be seated. You don't know how to see? Well, I will help. I will make sure I show you each page, okay? And you can tell me if I forget to show you the pages. All right? Good. All right. Well, look at this little one here. That's well. First of all, Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. How excited are you? Thank you very much. I'm so excited. And I've been thinking. This Thursday, we had our school pageant. And Miss Irvin, before the pageant started, talked about one of our preschoolers who, when they came up the center aisle for the pageant, kept looking in the manger. Guess what was not in the manger? The baby, because the baby wasn't born. But the, uh, the child looked at the manger and thought, a manger's supposed to have a baby Jesus in it, right? Yeah. yeah. And then we had a prayer that we said at church yesterday um, that said that when, when, when Jesus is born, that, that, that we would pray that they would find a mansion, a giant mansion inside each one of us for God to live in. Do you think we really have a mansion inside ourselves? No. Uh, but we have a heart, which is even better, which is even better. Um, but that heart uh, needs to have room for, for Jesus. That heart... Mm -hmm. And so it made me think about this book that I read last year, and my children love traditions, especially around Christmas. So I thought maybe, uh, since this will be the second year I've read this book, that it would become a tradition at this service. So this is one of my favorite stories. It's called The Tale of the Three Trees. And it's about special purposes. All right, well, I will... We'll show you the pages. You'll see. So, All right. Once upon a mountaintop, three little trees stood and dreamed of what they wanted to become when they grew up. They do grow. The first little tree looked up at the stars twinkling like diamonds above him. I want to hold treasure, he said. I want to be covered with gold and filled with precious stones. I will be the most beautiful treasure chest in the world. We'll see what happens. We'll see. The second little tree looked out at the small stream trickling by on its way to the ocean. I want to be a strong sailing ship, he said. I want to travel mighty waters and carry powerful kings. I will be the strongest ship in the world. And the third little tree looked down into the valley below where busy men and busy women worked in a busy town. I don't want to leave this mountaintop at all, she said. I want to grow so tall that when people stop to look at me, they will raise their eyes to heaven and think of God. I will be the tallest tree in the world. Yeah. Years passed and the rains came and the sun shone and the little trees grew tall. And one day, three woodcutters climbed the mountain. The first woodcutter looked at the first tree and said, this tree is beautiful. It is perfect for me. And with the swoop of his shiny ax, the first tree fell. Now I shall be made into a beautiful chest, thought the first tree. I shall hold wonderful treasure. The second woodcutter, he looked at the second tree and he said, this tree is strong. It is perfect for me. And with the swoop of his shiny ax, the second tree fell. Now I shall sail mighty waters, thought the second tree. I shall be a strong ship fit for kings. A strong ship that kings could travel on. 
The third tree felt her heart sink. Remember, the third tree just wanted to stay and grow on that mountain. The third tree felt her heart sink. When the last woodcutter looked her way, she stood straight and tall and pointed bravely to heaven. But the woodcutter never even looked up. Any kind of tree will do for me, he muttered. With a swoop of his shining axe, the third tree fell. The first tree rejoiced when the woodcutter brought him to a carpenter shop, but the busy carpenter was not thinking about treasure chests. Instead, his work-worn hands fashioned the tree into a feed box for animals. The once beautiful tree was not covered with gold or filled with treasure. He was coated with sawdust and filled with hay for hungry farm animals. The second tree smiled when the woodcutter took him to a shipyard. But no mighty sailing ships were being made that day. Instead, the once strong tree was hammered and sawed into a simple fishing boat too small and too weak to sail an ocean or even a river, he was taken to a little lake, and every day he brought in loads of smelly fish. And the third tree was confused when the woodcutter cut her into strong beams and just left her in the lumber yard. What happened, the once tall tree wondered. All I ever wanted to do was stay on that mountaintop and point to God. Many, many days and nights passed, and the three trees nearly forgot their dreams. But one night, golden starlight poured over the first tree as a young woman placed her newborn baby in the feed box. I wish I could make a cradle for him, her husband whispered. The mother squeezed his hand and smiled as the starlight shone on the smooth and sturdy wood. This manger is beautiful, she said. And suddenly the first tree knew he was holding the greatest treasure in the world. That's the baby of God, you're right. And one evening a tired traveler and his friends crowded into an old fishing boat. The traveler fell asleep as the second tree quietly sailed out into the lake. And soon thundering and thrashing storm arose and the little tree shuddered. He knew he did not have the strength to carry so many passengers safely through the wind and the rain. The tired man awakened. He stood up, stretched out his hand, and said, Peace. And the storm stopped as quickly as it had begun. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, the second tree knew he was carrying the king of heaven and earth. And one Friday morning, the third tree was startled when her beams were yanked from the forgotten woodpile and she flinched as she was carried through an angry, jeering crowd. She shuddered when soldiers nailed a man's hands to her. She felt ugly and harsh and cruel. I'm showing everybody. Yeah. But on Sunday morning, when the sun rose and the earth trembled with joy beneath her, the third tree knew that God's love had changed everything. It had made the first tree beautiful. It had made the second tree strong. And every time people thought of the third tree, they would think of God. They would think of God. That was better than being the tallest tree in the world. Do you have a question? You waited so patiently the whole time. What's your question? No, he didn't, but he got something even better. What do you think that first tree that wanted to be a, a, a treasure chest became? What do you think it became? The manger. And who, and who did they put in the manger in the story? Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. And the second became the boat that Jesus was on when he calmed the waters, right? And the third became a cross that makes us think about God all the time, right? So each one of us, each one of us 
as a special, as a heart, a special place in our heart for God to do amazing things. And our lives point to God too. Just like that manger was supposed to have a baby in it, our life is supposed to show God's love, the God's love that came into the world in a baby named Jesus. Do you think we can have our lives shine some light into the world and point to God? Just like that light, I think so. So can you all say amen with me? Amen. Well, thank you very much, and Merry Christmas again. And do you think you can find your way back to your big people? All right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you're right.